In this video, we'll take a look at how to compute probabilities and percentiles of a normal probability distribution and understand the role of the standard normal distribution in this process. We'll also take a look at the use of Excel's norm.s.dist, norm.dist, norm.s.inf, and norm.in functions to compute probabilities for the standard normal distribution and any normal distribution. Microsoft Excel provides the following four formulas with regards to calculating normal probabilities and percentiles. Norm.s.dist computes the cumulative probability for a given z value. Norm.s.inf computes the z value given a cumulative probability. Norm.dist computes the cumulative probability for any normal distribution, whereas norm.inf computes the x value given a cumulative probability for any normal distribution. The use of the true statement in the norm.s.dist function will make sure that the function returns the cumulative probability for a given z value, which would be the probability to the left of the z value. If the false statement is used, then Excel is going to calculate the probability of observing a single z value and this is equal to zero because the normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution. Similarly, for the norm.dist function, we make use of the true statement such that Excel will compute the cumulative probability to the left of any value from the normal distribution. So in the case where false is used, then it will calculate the probability of observing a single value from the normal distribution and because it's continuous, it will give you a probability of zero. Please keep in mind the syntax for the various computers that you may be using or even the Microsoft Excel software that you may have, since some of them make use of the decimal comma and others use the semicolon to separate the values that you put in the formula. Norm.s.dist simply requires the z value of interest as well as the cumulative statement, which in this case will be true. Norm.dist requires the x value, the mean, the population standard deviation, as well as the cumulative statement, which will also be true. Norm.s.inf simply requires the probability associated with the standard normal distribution such that it computes the z value for you. Norm.inf requires the probability or the area covered, the population mean, the population standard deviation, such that it gives back the x value for the normal probability distribution. Let's calculate the probability that z is less than 1. Now on the graph, this is indicated as the area shaded to the left of 1. So since we are using our z values to calculate the probability, we're going to make use of the norm.s.dist function. And this will be equal to norm.s.dist and in the bracket it's a z value 1, comma true, which is the cumulative statement. And this is equal to 0 0.8413. The probability that z is between 0 and 1, as indicated on the graph, is the shaded area between the values of z of 0 and 1. So making use of the norm.s.dist function once more, this will be equal norm.s.dist 1 comma true, which is the probability of z less than 1, minus norm.s.dist 0 comma true, which is the probability of z less than zero. The difference between these two results gives us our probability, which is 0 0.3413. The probability that z is between minus one and one, not included, is equal to the probability of z between minus one and one with both values included. Now for any continuous probability distribution, the probability of observing a single value is equal to zero. That's why these two probability statements are equivalent to each other. 
on the graph, this is indicated as the area shaded between minus 1 and 1. So using our Excel function norm.s.dist, this will be equal to norm.s.dist 1, true, which is the probability of z less than or equal to 1, minus norm.s.dist negative 1, true, which is equal to the probability of z less than or equal to minus 1. The difference between those two results gives us our final answer of 0 0.6827. As can be seen, this answer is approximately equal to the value of the empirical rule, which states that approximately 68% of your values or your data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. In this case, because we're working with our z values, which come from the standard normal probability distribution, the mean is 0 and the variance is 1, therefore the standard deviation is also 1. So our probability of lying within one standard deviation will be the probability that z is between minus 1 and positive 1. This is in line with the empirical rule. The probability of z greater than 1.47 is equal to 1 minus the probability of z less than 1.47. Both Excel and our normal probability distributions give us the values, give us the probabilities to the left of a value. Therefore, if we want the probability to the right of a value, we need to take 1 minus the probability to the left of that value. So on our graph, the probability of z greater than 1.47 is indicated by the, re, by the shaded area to the right of 1.47. Our Excel functions will be 1 minus norm.s.dist, and in bracket, it will be 1.47, which is the z value, comma true, and the difference between these two will give us 0.0708. The probability of z less than minus 1.47 on the graph is indicated as the shaded area to the left of minus 1.47. Using our Excel function, it will be norm.s.dist and in the bracket it will be minus 1.47, which is our z value, comma true. And this answer is equal to 0 0.0708. So these two answers are equivalent because of the property of symmetry as a result of using the normal distribution, which is symmetric around the mean. The probability that z is less than minus 3.3 is equal to the probability that z is less than or equal to minus 3.3. Once again, since the z value comes from a standard normal probability distribution, which is continuous, then the probability of observing a single z value is equal to zero. That's what makes these two probability statements equivalent to each other. On the graph, this probability is indicated as the area shaded to the left of minus 3.3. Using the norm.s.dist function in Excel, this is equal to norm.s.dist and in bracket minus 3.3 comma true which gives us an answer of 0 0.000483. Now we need to keep in mind that we observe an outlier when z is less than negative 3 or greater than positive 3. Therefore the probability that z is less than minus 3.3 is approximately 0. Suppose the area under the curve is now given and we are required to find the z value. In this case, we're going to make use of the norm.s.in function in Excel. So for the first question, the area to the left of z is 0 0.6331 and this is indicated on the graph as such. Therefore, in order to find the z value, we're going to use the norm.s.in function and input the probability or the area to the left so that we can get the z value. So this will be equal norm.s.in and in bracket it will be 0 0.6331 and the z value is 0 
So keep in mind the norm.s.in function only requires the probability. For the second question, calculate the z-value so that the probability to get a larger z-value is 0 0.1. So in this case, we've been given the probability to the right of the z-value. So to use our Excel functions, we're going to require the probability to the left of that z-value. And in this case, that probability will be 0 0.9. So in Excel, we're going to use our norm.s.in function and plug in our probability of 0 0.9 only into the function and our z value is 1.28155. If the area to the right of z is 0 0.119, then in order to get the z value, we will need the area to the left of z. So this will simply be 1 minus 0 0.119 and that gives us 0 0.881. So using our Excel functions, we're going to plug in our probability into norm.s.in. So this will be equal norm.s.in and in bracket 1 minus 0 0.119 or equal norm.s.in and in bracket 0 0.881. And this gives us our z value of 1.18. If the area to the left of z is 0 0.33, then on the graph this is indicated as such and our Excel function will still be norm.s.in because we're using the standard normal probability distribution function. So this will be equal norm.s.in and in bracket it's 0 0.33 and this is equal to negative 0 0.4399. 